Dear student in secondary series, you must read your experience teacher of biology. Today we'll take together part two from support in man, and we'll take together the pectoral girdle and pelvic girdle. Don't forget join for channel and please write your comments below. The support in man structure of skeleton, axial skeleton, and appendicular skeleton. We will take together axial skeleton, which consists of vertebral column, skull, thoracic cage, and in this video, we will take together appendicular skeleton, which consists of pectoral girdle and upper limbs, pelvic girdle and lower limbs. This is a picture of the axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. Axial skeleton consists of a skull, backbone, and the rib cage. Appendicular skeleton consists of upper limbs and pectoral girdle, lower limbs and pelvic girdle. We'll take together the appendicular skeleton. We'll take together pectoral girdle and upper limbs. The pectoral girdle consists of two identical or similar half, which each half consists of scapula and cervical. There are two pectoral girdle, left and right. Left and right are identical and the consists of scapula which exists in the left and the cervix in the left and another scapula exists in the right and the cervical exists in the right hand. First, what is meant by scapula? A scapula it is triangle dorsal bone, its inner end is broad or white while the outer end is pointed and has process attached to the cervical. Number two, cervical. It is the ventral thin bone that attach anteriorly in the sternum and laterally in the scapula. We'll see the scapula and cervical in the picture. This bone is called scapula. The scapula it is port or white, and this is the inner part, and another part is pointed and attached with cervical. That is the bone which is called cervical attached with scapula and attached with the sternum. Another shape of pectoral girdle, we will see the pectoral girdle, this bone is called scapula, we will see this bone is port or white in the inner part, and the outer part is uh, pointed and contain gonal cavity. Another bone that is thin bone is called cervical, which join between the upper limbs and the bones of sternum. At the outer end of the scapula, there are glonoid cavity through which is the head of humerus fed forming shoulder joint. But this is called shoulder joint, which consists of humerus of the upper limbs and cervical in the pectoral grid. Another shape of upper limbs, shape of cervical and scapula, shape of humerus, radius, and annula, which form forearm and hand bones. Each upper limbs consists of number A, upper arm supported by one bone called the humerus. This arm called humerus and the first bones of the upper limbs. Number B, Lower arm supported by two bones, bones which are called radius and another bones which are called ulna. The upper part of the ulna has depression where the inner projection of humerus fed. The radius is the small, this is the radius, is the small in size and can rotate around the fixed is ulna, the upper part which is called humerus, the lower part which is called forearm. The forearm consists of radius and ulna. The radius is small and rotate, but ulna is large and doesn't rotate. Part number C, a rest, consists of eight bones. The eight bones arranged in two rows called carpals. Their upper end are attached to the lower part of radius, while the lower end are attached to the bones of hand palm. The rest again consists of two rows of eight bones. 
ال8 bones consists of two row called carpals ال upper part of carpals consists of the finger or the hand palm the palm consists of four long thin bones that is the four long thin bones which you called metacarpal followed by the one of five digit that is a five digit which consists of three bones one and two and three called phalanges except swam which consists of two phalanges only part number two from appendicular skeleton the pelvic girdle and the lower limb the pelvic girdle consists of two identical half used at ventra at the region of called pubic symphysis أو الارتفاق العين. Each half consists of bone called ilium. This bones called ilium, and this is the part of the back bone which you call carium. Each half consists of dorsal bone called ilium, which is attached anteriorly and ventral to the bones called pubis. This bones which you call pubis, and attached posteriorly and ventral to the bones which is called ilium. We will see the pelvic girdle. At the position of attachment of ilium and ischium bone, there is deep depression called ectopelium, into which is the head of side bones femur feed forming hip joint. The ectopelium, which is a femur attach or feed forming side joint or hip joint. What is meant by pubic symphysis? It is the region which two identical half of pelvic girdle are attached or fused. Another structure of pelvic girdle will take the lower limbus. Each lower limbus consists of three bones. Bones which are called side or femur. A side which is supported by bones called femur. Another structure called shank supported by two bones, the inner part which is called tibia and the outer bones which is called fibula. This bones is inner and called tibia, the outer bones which is called fibula. At the lower end of femur, there is two process that articulating with the shank and the joint called the knee. The knee it is the part which is a femur joint with the shank bones or with the tibula bone. In front of knee, there is the bones. The small bones is round. This bones is called betel or radafa. With this bones cover the knee joint. Another structure of lower limbus, which is called ankle. An ankle consists of seven irregular shape called tarsals. And the largest part, which you called is the hell, and exists in the back. But these bones, which you called ankle, ankle bones, ankle bones consist of seven irregular. The foot bones, which consist of five bones called metatarsals, which are long and thin, and end with bones of five toes. Bones of toes is made of three bones. This are uh, three bones, which are called blendes, except the big toy, which has two blendes only. Another information about axial and appendicular skeleton, importance number, the total numbers of foot bones is 26, 5 tarsals, 5 meter tarsal, and 14 blendes. Total numbers of lower limbus, 30. 7 tarsals, 5 meta tarsals, and 14 phalanges, 1 femur, 2 shrink, and 1 battle. Number 3 is the number of cavities of the lower limbus, 2 gonot cavity, 2 ulna, 2 ectopelium. So the number of cavities equals 6. The number of bones in pelvic girdle. Two bones, the number of bones of the appendicular skeleton 126, 64 pectoral gradle, and the upper limbus 62 pelvic gradle, and the lower limbus. The number of bones of axial skeleton 80, total numbers of bones in axial skeleton 206 minus 126 appendicular. The skeleton so the numbers of bone in axial equal 80. The numbers of bones that join between vertebral column and limbus 
الان فايف سكارال فيرتيبرا ذا نمبرز اوف فيرتيبرال كولامن اند بيكتورال جريدل 26 فيرتيبرال كولامن اند 2 بيكتورال جريدل ذا نمبرز اوف جريدلز 6 4 بيكتورال جريدل و2 بيلفيك جريدل Welcome to the appendicular skeleton the arms legs and their girdles The skeleton is divided into two major portions, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton consists of the bones of the skull, the vertebral column, and the rib cage. The appendicular skeleton consists of the bones of the upper and lower limbs and the bony girdles that support them on the body trunk. This learning object examines the appendicular skeleton. The pectoral girdle is composed of two clavicles and two scapulae, one set for each arm. The clavicle or collarbone is easy to recognize because of its S shape. The scapula or shoulder blade is flat and irregular. The glenoid fossa, or cavity, forms the arm socket with the head of the humerus. All shoulder movements include the sternoclavicular joint, the only body joint attaching the girdle to the trunk, which is formed by the medial end of the clavicle and the sternum. The upper arm is called the humerus. The upper extremity of the humerus consists of the bone's large, rounded head, also located on the humerus are the coronoid and olecran fossa, which accommodate the forearm bones during movement at the elbow. The two lower arm bones are the lateral positioned radius and medial positioned ulna. The hand contains 27 bones, including eight carpal bones and five metacarpal bones. Four fingers each have three phalanges, but the thumb only has two phalanges. Hip bones that comprise the pelvic girdle are much larger than the bones in the shoulder girdle in order to help the body bear weight. The hip bones are also called the os coxae. Each coxa is made up of the ilium, ischium, and pubis. The upper leg consists of one bone. The femur is the longest and strongest bone in your body. The lower leg has two bones, the medial, bigger, and stronger tibia, and the lateral, deeper, and inferior fibula. The seven weight-bearing tarsals or ankle bones are much larger and stronger than the wrist or carpal bones. The largest tarsal bone is the calcaneus, or heel bone. Five metatarsals form the ball of the foot. The foot has a total of 26 bones, including three phalanges for each toe, except for the big toe, which has two. The foot also contains built-in longitudinal and transverse arches for weight support. Thank you for listening and don't forget to join for channel and write your comments below the video.